WCW and NWO Thunder. Back of the locker room area, we have a couple of members of the NWO. Are we catching them in the heat of battle? Please! <laughs> Jump down to this area down here. We're going over and over again for help. Armory. The basement is automatic. Keep that steady. Get your PlayStation on the ground and get some of me. Life is a game, and nobody knows it better than this crowd. They're video game journalists and industry insiders. Last September, they gathered in Las Vegas to celebrate PlayStation's third birthday and the launch of Spyro the Dragon. In honor of Spyro the Dragon, they began the day on a scavenger hunt for treasure hidden deep in the city of Las Vegas. Each team had its own van. Are we ready to rock Who could figure out the clues, find the landmarks, and get back first to win the prize, a $300 Sony shopping spree. I am going to win this contest, okay? I want everyone to know ahead of time, the winner, right here. Like the different worlds in Spyro the Dragon, this adventure had it all. Money, fame, thrills, romance, and the chance to hit it big. The chance to hit it big. It'll leave it without us. The chance to hit it big? By nightfall, it was party time. For the Spyro the Dragon development team, it was a sweet finish to 18 months of round-the-clock work days. I know, this bright light is freaking me out. The last time I saw one of those, I was abducted by aliens. Remember what I told you earlier today? There is no way that we lost the scavenger hunt. When they announce a winner, you're going to see this one walking up, taking the prize. The winning team with 810 points is the Magic Crafters. For Sony Computer Entertainment America and PlayStation, the party was a celebration of an amazing first three years, going from underdog to top dog. 
With over 50 million consoles sold worldwide, PlayStation has become the leading brand in video game entertainment. And to illustrate this even further, since its introduction in 1995, a PlayStation has been sold once every eight seconds. Several speakers noted that Spyro the Dragon was one of the most technically advanced PlayStation games available. Yet it just scratches the surface of what's possible on the console. To see what's coming next from developers, just stay tuned to PlayStation Underground. Welcome to part 4 of Project Wormhole. Watch out, because in this issue, we'll add some intelligent enemies to the tunnel. We'll make some that fly down the center of the tunnel and try to ram your ship. The tricky part is that they need to avoid running into each other and the other obstacles in the tunnel at the same time. To accomplish this, the artificial intelligence, or AI, responsible for driving the enemy craft, needs to try to estimate where your ship is going to be and plot an intercept course. To do this, the AI draws an imaginary line from where it is to where you are going to be. It adjusts this line to avoid any obstacles in the way and then tries to steer itself onto the line. With all of these enemy ships trying to hunt you down, things are going to get pretty tough in there. So to be fair, we will finally be adding some guns to your ship. The first weapons we'll add will probably be some tunnel-following missiles. You can fire these and they will travel along the tunnel without any guidance until they run into something. Hundreds of you have sent in suggestions for Wormhole and we're incredibly impressed. This was going to be the last installment on making the game, but there's so much interest we've decided to make it an ongoing series. Next issue we'll be adding some flashy explosions and other special effects polishing up the look. We'll also add some new weapons and enemies, so keep the ideas coming. You can see a beginning selection of people's ideas for Wormhole by visiting www.playstation.com and choosing PlayStation Underground Online. Post your own ideas there or mail them to us at this address. Wormhole is a team effort. Let us know what you think.
Hi, my name is Robert Johnson. I am the Associate Marketing Manager here at Capcom Entertainment, and I am here to show you today the Pocket Alpha 3 game for the new Sony Pocket Station. I'm going to show you how the Japanese version works of the Pocket Alpha 3 game. Basically what the PDA does is it is a little mini memory card peripheral that plugs right into your PlayStation and allows you to download the characters from your original Alpha 3 game onto the Pocket Alpha 3 game in order to build up the characters while you're on the road. And then once you have them built up, you can easily upload them back to the PlayStation in order to play those edited characters. Another cool feature about Pocket Alpha 3 is that you can fight against your friends. Just take it around, point it at your friends, and use the infrared communication device at the top here to play against your friends anywhere.
job with Xena was we wanted to do something that mimicked the show, where it was a hardcore action beat em up game that also had elements of puzzle solving and some strategy elements. There's over 20 different levels, Hades, the Amazon jungle, one on one fighting, one on multiple character fighting. Her famed chakra, like a flying guillotine that she can throw. She can stomp on the other player's face. If the hostage is killed, she will not be able to progress to the next level. Today we're going to talk about Street Fighter Alpha 3. Street Fighter Alpha 3 is a perfect arcade translation. There's no missing animations, the speed is flawless, and you can adjust the speed as well. The PlayStation version sees the return of Fei Long and T-Hawk. And you may see the return of some real popular secret hidden characters, as well as some brand new hidden characters. Another feature of the game is a dramatic battle mode, which allows you to play two-on-one fighting action. A brand new addition to Street Fighter Alpha 3 is the World Tour mode, for PlayStation only.
oldest stories in almost any culture are about heroes. For thousands of years, heroic tales have inspired people and taught them how to face danger. Now, instead of just listening to a hero's tale, you can live it. Video game technology lets you face a hero's challenges blow by blow. That's what a new role-playing game is all about, called The Legend of Ligaia, from the producer of Wild Arms. It brings new elements to the RPG genre. You play the part of Vaughn, a young villager in a world that's been choked by a mysterious mist, bringing madness and death to all it touches. Creatures called the Saru once lived alongside people and helped them. Now the mist has transformed the Saru into deadly enemies. Vaughn discovers how to lift some of the mist. Your mission is to guide him as he fights to save his land. One innovative feature of this RPG is that it's among the first to have a completely 3D all polygonal world. Compared to other role-playing games, it's quite possible that we have been able to achieve twice the amount of polygons on screen. In the making of this game, we studied films to capture good tempo and flow, and good camera work. I poured my heart and soul into development. Each polygonal character is a reflection of our love for this game and our work. Another innovation in Legend of Ligaia is the style of combat. Personally, I really like fighting games and wanted, and wanted to incorporate the exhilaration of a fighting game into a role-playing game. Characters are full-size with rich animation. That gives a Legend of Ligaia the atmosphere and feel of a real fighting game. And with a DualShock analog controller, you're experiencing the vibrations of every hit. Characters can discover and take on new combo moves. They'll need them later. Enemies have a wide variety of attacks so that players won't get bored. In the latter part of the game, they get even more spectacular, and I think it's something players can look forward to. Producer Takahiro Kaneko designed Legend of Lagaya with a bigger, real-world challenge in mind. The Saru represent science and technology. They are very advantageous things to humans, but we shouldn't rely too much on them and forget about basic human strength or let trust and basic human relationships break down. Without being preachy, we wanted to show that the future is something that each person creates for themselves. According to Kaneko-san, a good game is a fantasy world that strengthens a player's ability to choose his or her own future in the real world. Whether it be a book or a comic, when growing up we all have places to escape to where we can forget about our daily troubles. And through the trials and tribulations of those fantasy worlds, we find solutions and hope for our daily lives. To be a successful fantasy world, an RPG needs a dark side that's evil, yet believable, and ultimately defeatable. It's important for me to work with planners and designers who can create that. As the condition of our real world worsens, can we return to the strengths within us to save ourselves? That's the hero's challenge waiting for you in this game.
wrestling's a great thing to watch when you want to get out of reality and just turn on the TV and you know watch some of the crazy drama that goes on. Is and uh, we're bringing that to you in the game. The things that I'm proud about WCW NW Thunder are the details, the way the characters uh, leave the ring, the way they come in, and it, it really brings the whole experience of you know being at a wrestling event into your living room. You and your buddy can go at it and just pound each other all day, you know, take out your frustrations, and I think that's important in uh, video games. Getting to go out there and beat people up for a living and not get thrown in jail. That has to be one of the best, my most favorite uh, thing about being a wrestler, for sure. Oh boy, WCW and NWO Thunder. You know, I love the game. I play it with my mother-in-law. No, I don't cheat. Please don't ever accuse me of that. I understand right now, back in the locker room area here at the Ice Palace in Tampa, Florida, we have a couple of members of the NWO, Vincent and the Giant. And what are we catching him in the heat of battle? Please. How I get out of this? It's just like real life. I'm killing you. Oh. Oh. For, for the gamers that have played WCW Nitro on the PlayStation, uh, Thunder is definitely an upgrade in terms of the speed of the gameplay. It's it's a lot faster than, than Nitro's engine was. Uh, there's more moves per character. There's more characters. They're all they've all been updated. Pick me, or I'll stick your head through the mat. Can you dig it, sucker? The torture is gonna last longer on a Hollywood Walk of Shame. You'll find out who's next. Ah! There's additional modes. Um, there's the ability to take a weapon and bring it into the ring and use it against your opponent as you know fans see on television. Nitro, awesome game. I mean, uh, just phenomenal for its time, but Thunder is just night and day compared to it. This is our first game with the cage matching, and uh, you know, it was fun making that, and you can throw them into the side of the cage and knock them out, and you can climb up the cage and jump off and do elbow drops and all those fun moves. There's just a lot that Thunder offers to the WCW hardcore fans. There's a battle royal mode. Power bomb! Battle royal is brutal because you got to have eyes in the back of your head. We didn't use motion capture. Um, Basically, every move is done frame by frame by hand following a video image. If you motion capture a character, it looks stiff. It might look good on TV, but it doesn't look good in the game. When you're making a wrestling game, you have to exaggerate even more to make it look good in the game. We had this backbreaking move, so we took an apple and kind of, crunch, kind of crunched on an apple for a while, and we thought it was funny, so we left it in the game. That's sweet. Ooh, what a punch to the face. That's the strike. The best way to get good at Thunder is to have a wrestler sitting by you, behind you, just directing you, telling you what to do, and pointing out stuff. The second best thing is to learn the moves, get in there with a, with a powerful wrestler, say a, a Saturn or a Goldberg, and really get to know that character. We also include a list of moves in the instruction manual so that the gamer who maybe isn't a wrestling fanatic and doesn't know that you know, Sting should normally do the Scorpion Deathlock, um, it's all laid out for them on paper. Go out there and experiment and have fun and you're gonna learn the tricks and the, and the, uh, the tips. Mean Gene back here for PlayStation Underground. I understand that there may be a major upset in the making between the Giant and Vincent. Let's check it out. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's bold. <laughs> All right, do that. <laughs> okay, I will do it no more. Come on, look. Come on, don't do that again. Okay, oh. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, yo, yo, don't yo. get upset, man. Hey. It's just a game, man. Yo, 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 I'm out of here. Ooh, he got a bad attitude. What an attitude. And a new TV. Thunder really brings the whole experience of you know, being at a wrestling event, being at that WCW Monday Nitro event or, or Thursday Thunder event into your living room. 